back to the past. Samurai Jack. Apologies for not reviewing Samurai Jack last week. When it came to chapter 94, I honestly don't know how I felt about it. I love the Scotsman's return. And while I expected him to die, I did not expect him to return as a ghost. And I'm glad that they're setting up the little subplot with him assembling an army right now, as opposed to just shoehorning it in at the very end of the series. But I am not sure how I feel on how they handled Ashi's redemption. I understand they only have 10 episodes to work with, but I feel like the sequence of events of her redemption feels kind of out of place. If anything, what this episode did, encountering all these people where Jack hasn't patched her lives for the better, should have happened before last week, and just becomes convinced that Aku is the source of all evil. If anything, running into people, and hearing stories about how great Jack is, should have been the thing to open her mind, and then she goes to Jack and says, okay, I'm ready to learn the truth. But I understand that Jack is on the verge of suicide, and she had to find him, so those sequences couldn't play out that way. I'm sure they could have written around it. Regardless, I'm not really sure how I feel about it, and I don't want to assess something without being entirely sure of my feelings towards it. But this episode, Season 5, Episode 6, Chapter 95, mwah, perfection. I loved this episode. This was definitely my favorite so far. And yes, it was entirely due to all the callbacks. But it wasn't just the callbacks, it's how they were executed. Everything about this episode, especially the music, the music was really on point with this episode. Definitely the best scored episode so far. Tyler Bates has done an amazing job as composer for this season. This was just a pure love letter to fans of the original. You can still get it and still thoroughly enjoy this episode without watching the original series, but you will not get the maximum enjoyment it provides. You just won't. You won't get that feeling of utter surprise when all these old characters return and seeing how they are now. The episode opens up with Ashi on a high-tech air balloon, and do looks deceive me, or is that Zorak from Space Ghost? Or as you guys may recognize him from Cartoon Planet, Space Ghost Coast to Coast, and The Brack Show. This episode had a lot of that, with Spike, Astro, and Robot Popeye all appearing. And I believe one of the dogs from Two Stupid Dogs, if that's supposed to be him, all really nice nods to Hannibal Barbera cartoons. This really was just Easter eggs the episode. First, Ashi encounters the Woolies from episode 4 of the original series, who recognizes her as Aku's bounty hunter. So, are the daughters of Aku an unknown thing? Or did they just assume she's from Aku because, you know, half of her body is black and she was asking for Samurai Jack, and that just rhymed? Still trying to piece together if Aku's aware of the daughters of Aku or not. They tell Ashi the story of how Jack saved them, and this is a minor nitpick, but the inconsistent skin tone for Jack is starting to bug me. In some flashbacks, he's yellow, and some he's his current skin tone, which is a lot more... I don't know, not yellow? I don't want to say Caucasian skin color. But the common skin tone used, for better luck of terms, white characters in media. And in the Wooly flashback, he's that skin tone, his current skin tone, but then the flashback of the archers we see later on, he's yellow again. This is also an issue with Scaramouche's eyes. In episode 1, they were blue. Here, literally in some frames, they randomly become blue, and then next thing you know, they're white again. What is with this inconsistency? That doesn't exactly ruin the episode, however. Like I said, very, very minor nitpick. Ashi thanks the Woolies for sharing their story, and then Sky dies out of the air balloon. From there, she lands, and Aku's Beetle Drones are fleeing, where she encounters the archers from, I believe, season 3, and the music in this scene was amazing. It literally almost brought a tear to my eye. A good score can really make or break anything. Television, film, and especially animation. Music is a part of the storytelling. And in this case, the storytelling was phenomenal. The archers had developed a society, a little village-like place where they all live, and have a statue in Jack's likeliness. They share their story of Jack's noble sacrifice, and here you can really feel the impact of it. It didn't really seem that big of a deal in the original run, but seeing as how far they come and how taller they got instead of aging, although I guess they are immortal as a side effect from Aku's curse, it really illustrates just how great Jack is, how selfless he is. From there, Ashi visits my favorite episode ever, Jack and the Rave. We see Olivia, the main child that Jack was seeking in that episode after their father begged them to come back, now runs the rave but dedicates it to Jack, and they even do the little samurai dance he did in that episode, and oh my god, it was just a blast of nostalgia. I was so happy. Olivia sings to Ashi about Jack's good deeds and how he's impacted their lives for the better, 
saving them from Aku's brainwashing. And it's the first time we get a quote unquote square in the series, as Olivia refers to Aku's music as Beats from Hell. It was a really nice sequence. I know some people are calling it corny or cringy, but I loved it. Ashi promises that she'll find Jack and continues her voyage. She then goes to the bar where she encounters the samurai, my boy. I was looking forward to him all episode and they delivered. He's an old man now. Unfortunately, he gave up being the samurai, but we get an awesome flashback with again, awesome music. And I really like how this flashback was presented. It took some artistic liberties and how it was retold. However, whereas the customers in the bar was telling how Jack messed them up and how Ashi couldn't stand a chance against them, the samurai is basically saying, yeah, I realized my calling due to him and it wasn't really that bad. And they point that out, but he says, oh, you just have no soul. And even Demongo makes a 10 second cameo coming in and his cameo is just the equivalent of, I'm here too. Yet it worked. They did it because they could do it and I loved every second of it. And he just awkwardly leaves. I love the Mongo. He was one of my favorite villains in the original run of the series, and I wonder how he survived, because I thought Aku killed him, he crushed him. But being an otherworldly demon, I guess he can't endure that. Aku just merely fired him. So before I progress, this is where all the cameos end for the episode. That being said, this episode was just that, cameos. I enjoyed them, and if I have one thing to say, that's not necessarily a complaint, but if this season was 13 episodes, like the other ones, not just 10, this would have been a two-parter. You just know this would have been a two-parter for more cameos, more nods, more throwbacks. While I'm not sure the Ravers would play a role in future episodes, I do think the Archers, and possibly the Woolies, and I do think the Samurai, and maybe even the Mongo, since Aku fired him, will all join the Scotsman's army towards the end of the series. Especially since the Archers extend their hand out to Ashi in case they ever need help. I do think the climax of the series will be the people that Jax helped accumulate into one big army. And it's gonna be fucking awesome when it happens. This episode solely exists for throwbacks, with the only real plot advancement happening towards the end, but I loved it. I simply love the aspect of it. Now there's a scene I skipped over, and that scene I want to address right now, and that's the revelation that Ashi wasn't wearing a skin tight suit, but all the black on her was actually part of her body when she was little in order to become one of the darkness just like how Aku had became one of the darkness. The high priestess put Ashi and all the other daughters down this hole into what appears to be some kind of more lava, hot rocks, something, and it blackened their bodies. Ashi was naked the entire time. And while I think that was an interesting twist, I do find it kind of ham-fisted how Ashi scrubbed all the ash off of her, all the tar, whatever you want to call that and then quickly formed a new outfit out of nature. It was nice and symbolized how Ashi is as a person, someone who loves the planet. And I do think this design is more reflective of her true personality, but it may have happened too soon. And again, I don't know how I feel about it. I like Ashi's character art, but the execution could be a little bit better in my book. I'm still on board with it, but at the same time, I have very mixed feelings about it, if that makes sense. That was a really important moment for a character, yet I didn't really feel much. I don't know if it was overshadowed by all the cameos, in which case maybe that should happen in a separate episode, or if they just didn't execute it to the maximum capability, and the music was extraordinary during that scene, but something about it just did not resonate with me. I do like the design though, I want to get that clear. It is totally reflective of Ashi's personality, and that's what's important. One look at Aku, at his mannerisms, at his facial expressions, you get his character. One look at Jack, you get his character. The Scotsman, you get it. And now Ashi is following suit. One look at her tells her entire story. Ashi finally finds Jack, and my worst fears were confirmed. Jack is on the verge of committing suicide. He has a sword, and he's about to perform seppuku, which his stance in the promos indicated, but I just didn't want to believe it. And the horseman is actually a real thing. It was actually a ghost. It was a hallucination, like I thought it was. I thought it was the spirit of Jack's sword or some kind of hallucination, but no. It's just a ghost of a fallen warrior, the Grim Reaper. An embodiment of death, something I thought it was, but wasn't entirely sure, and I didn't think everybody could see it, because Ashi could see it, and it interacted with Ashi. It was handing Ashi's ass to her. <laughs> Ashi. So while the Grim Reaper and other fallen warriors are watching Jack as he's moments away from ending his life, Ashi keeps trying to talk Jack out of it, saying she's met all the people whose lives were impacted positively by Jack, and that the kids he thought were dead were actually alive. 
Viscus through the Jack, and he helps vanquish the spirit, the Grim Reaper. Jack has literally beaten death. Is there nothing this man can't do? Is there? I think the answer is no. After he does so, the other spirits disappear. Jack and Ashi exchange glances, and Jack says, I like your dress and your hair. Ashi asks, now what? And Jack says, now it's time to find my sword. Let's go. It is time. Four episodes left. Let's make the best out of it. And now there's a subplot with Scaramouche, which I was very mixed on. Honestly, all we really needed was the first scene of Scaramouche waking up and going off to tell Aku. The rest of this felt very fillerish. It really didn't need to be there. Yes, I immensely enjoyed it. I love Scaramouche saying that the guy looked like a talking penis and all this hijinks to get on the ship. I love seeing those Hanna Barbera dogs on the ship. The entire bit was hilarious. I was laughing out loud every single time Scaramouche was on screen. And he's such a great character, and Dendi knew that, and I'm glad he brought him back for the rest of the season. And I think that list of Aku's other top assassins, we will see those two before the end of the season. In fact, that synopsis for episode 8 is Jack and Ashi being hunted down by the galaxy's deadliest creature, so something's definitely going to happen there. It by no means dragged down the episode, but I feel like that screen time could have been used for something else. More callbacks, perhaps? Overall, an amazing episode. Like I said, definitely my favorite by far, but that's literally just because of the callbacks. Some people still prefer episode 2 or episode 3 or even episode 1, and I understand all of that. The action was better there. The action was very short-lived in this episode. But then again, we saw Jack literally defeat the Grim Reaper. But the music, the scenery, the art style in this episode, all the callback, like I said, this episode was a love letter to the original series, and it shows. But these are just my thoughts, and I'd love to hear yours, so please, comment down below. What did you think of this episode? Did you enjoy as much as I did? Let's get discussion going in the comment section below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, it really helps us out. Follow us on social media, swing by the Roundtable store. And if you're feeling generous, support us on Patreon. One dollar can go a long way. Ostrich Vox, signing out. This video has been powered by Patreon. If you want to give us some more support, head to patreon.com slash roundtablevids, become a patron, and get some awesome perks. Thanks for watching another video on the Roundtable. If you want to get more involved with our community and watch videos from Let's Talk with Tom, Voxbox, and more, click the video right here. Or if you want to get some more of the animation goodness, watch some Crystal Clear or Mini Monday, click the video right here. And please, don't forget to subscribe.